revolution. But it, I know it's taking over. Revolution. But it, that's why I'm telling everybody worldwide. This is my world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revolution. Welcome, Climate Viewers. This is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com and Climate Viewer Apps at climateviewer.org. Today's September 18th, 2016, and time for some epic chemtrail conspiracy news. So, um, Alana Freeland's got her new book coming out, and uh, I wrote this for the book, and I figured you guys might enjoy it. Now, uh, this uh, story cannot complete the entire picture. But it will give you a very clear idea of the agenda. So let's make this short and sweet. Um, the U.S. military is more than likely involved in geoengineering already. And they are attempting to take care of the commercial flights and get them in on the fun too. So how does it work? It works with soot and sulfur. The people involved are the ICAO, the NATO, U.S. State Department, Department of Transportation, EPA, FAA, and NASA. And what they're doing is trying to use sulfur to change the contents of the clouds coming out of planes and make them into cooling clouds because currently they trap heat. So let's talk about soot. Soot particles are composed of individual nearly spherical particles which have a mean, number mean radius between 10 and 30 nanometers. So these are nanoparticles of soot, a.k.a. carbon black dust or carbon black aerosol. Why is that important? Because in 1994, two FOIAs from the Joint Non-Lethal Weapons Directorate showed that the Navy and Air Force are involved in weather modification research using carbon black dust. The very next year, in 1995 and 96, Owning the Weather mentions carbon black dust by 2005 technology to be developed by the DOD then the next year they had an actual meeting with the at the uh, weather test technology symposium 97 and dr. Arnold Barnes from the Phillips lab basically gave three slides on weather modification using carbon black so there they are and in the last slide near the end create suppress cirrus contrails for surveillance coverage so that's the military bragging that in 1987 they could make clouds to block out surveillance satellites or help with nighttime operations make it darker making clouds to block satellite spy transmissions from cameras and lasers directed energy weapons interesting so we're going to step back. Back in 1973, William M. Gray and William M. Frank had a couple papers about steering hurricanes with carbon black dust, weather modification of carbon black dust, absorption of solar energy. Right there. Well, that would be great if they hadn't come up here to 2008 when the Department of Homeland Security decided they wanted to steer hurricanes. Mosh Alamaro from MIT said, Let's do it with the use of carbon black aerosol to selectively heat parts of the atmosphere by dispersion of CBA, carbon black aerosol, above a hurricane. And they called for $64 million in three years to conduct large-scale tests with evaluations and reports. And that is fully underway. So, that being said, I went to the EPA in Washington, D.C., and I told them, you know, why are you guys trying to regulate greenhouse gases coming out of planes? Nobody's scared of greenhouse gases coming out of planes. We're scared about, you know, people are concerned about clouds. And I want you to stop making clouds. And, of course, they totally ignored us. Then they decided on July 25th, breaking EPA to limit greenhouse gases from airplanes. So they decided to go ahead and write regulations. Uh, a couple days later, six days later, the White House releases the Federal Alternative Jet Fuel Research and Development Strategy. Less than a week later, China, U.S., and Europe pledged support for Global Aviation Emissions Pact. So the ICAO decided to regulate itself. And the EPA is going to dismiss the regulations. Oh, well, they regulated themselves. Why should I do it? So they ignored everything we said about clouds, about soot, about metal particulates. And just threw it out the window and the minute that the icao agreed to 
regulate itself, they threw that out too. You can watch our hearing here. So um, why is it a problem? Because as you can see, these clouds, this is one E3 AWACS doing circles right there, and that one plane by itself covered almost all of Britain by itself, which is why there are quotes like this, contrails formed by aircraft can evolve into cirrus clouds indistinguishable from those formed naturally. These spreading contrails may be causing more climate warming today than all of the carbon dioxide emitted by aircraft since the start of aviation. That's heavy. And that's from the guy um, who wrote the report on contrails for the IPCC. He said, you know, in his last report, uh, they're, they're not that bad. And then less than a year later turned around and said, oh crap, it's worse than all of the CO2 <laughs> coming out of planes. So EPA, you look stupid. Um, so what's their plan? Their plan is the addition of sulfur to the fuel. Options for dispersing gases from planes include addition of sulfur to the fuel, which would release the aerosol through the exhaust system of the plane, or attach a nozzle to release sulfur from within its own tank. Um, so why would they do that? Well, it turns out the chemtrail agenda laid out as clearly as possible in one small quote. Ulrich Schumann for the DLR in 2010 was speaking to the ICAO, and this is what he said. Both aspects, soot and flight routing, offer the potential for aviation to reduce the climate impact of aviation, less soot emissions, less warming, and more cooling contrails. Predictable for operational planning. So, as we can see here, they don't want to get rid of the clouds. They want to take advantage of them. Currently, uh, clouds coming out of planes, they trap heat. They heat the planet. They're going to face a huge carbon tax. But if they could turn those clouds into cooling clouds, they can make a lot of money. So what does he mean by operational planning? Well, <laughs> Ulrich Schumann said, let's do it myself. Contrail Cirrus Prediction Tool, COSIP. He's made this program that will tell them where the, where the clouds are going to be. And if the clouds are going to heat the planet, they'll probably try to fly around them. But if they'll cool the planet, keep flying right where you're at. We're going to make some money today. And if they can prove over a certain amount of time that they are cooling the planet, they will get carbon credits. And that is an amazing amount of money when you consider what they're trying to do. So that is exactly the plan. This is the latest plan. Applying high fuel sulfur content at aviation cruise altitudes combined with ultra low sulfur jet fuel at lower altitudes results in reduced aviation induced mortality and increased negative re compared to the baseline aviation scenario and what that means is use high sulfur jet fuel when we get to flight altitude to cool the planet use no or low sulfur jet biofuel on takeoff to kill less people around airport runways and that's a fact so you say to yourself well why would they want to put sulfur in there are they really going to do this well it turns out um, the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, which is run as a joint NASA DLR FAA thing uh, called ACRI, um, they have these tests called the Alternative Fuel Effects on Contrails and Cruise Emissions, Access 1 and 2. And as you can see here, <laughs> they are currently testing this fuel. They are flying up into the clouds right behind a plane this looks pretty darn dangerous <laughs> watch this guy i mean he's getting thrown all around but he's flying right through that cam trail right there and they're testing it now they're not testing persistent contrails they're not testing clouds that have already fanned out and covered the sky why because probably background they're like oh there'll be too much background crap in there we'll never know the difference but this is a step in the right direction they're actually testing it the problem is they haven't released any of their test results they're not being very transparent about it and they are testing JP8 doped with sulfur. So if this is all a conspiracy and Schumann really didn't mean it and these guys talking about doping the jet fuel didn't mean it, why is the access flights, Dr. Rang say, Hal Thorey, I've talked to him on the phone, why are they testing JP8 fuel doped with sulfur? And why, in fact, are they testing a low sulfur JP8 military fuel, a 50-50 blend of JP8 and Camelina, and JP8 and dope sulfur when commercial flights fly jet a1 or jet a the reason why is simple they are talking about doing this for the military so in this scenario nato has actually already done this once 
and they screwed it up. So this is like the get it right chance. And you can read all about it right here. There's a link. NATO has already applied fuel sulfur doping technique. Um, and you can see that that's exactly what they say in their own um, technology, in their own, all of the geoengineering papers say the same thing. Um, we could use um, commercial passenger flights, but it, it would be inefficient. In terms of efficient geoengineering strategy, this technique proved to be unvi unviable. So they're saying, you know, maybe doing it from Delta Airlines isn't such a great idea. We really need some new planes with large amounts of sulfur added to their jet fuel. Well, guess what? Alan Robach and Ben Kravitz, two geoengineers, the military's already manufactured more planes than would be necessary, would be required for this geoengineering scenario. And they were specifically talk about the KC-135 refueling plane. So they could use the nozzle on the back of it just to spray it directly into the stratosphere. Or the fact that all of these military planes can fly into the stratosphere, whereas you know, <laughs> commercial flights don't. So tropospheric geoengineering is what we're talking about for commercial flights and stratospheric for military flights. And that jives very well with what everybody's seeing. So um, they're seeing tankers with no markings, not on flight trackers, dumping all over the sky. And that's the military planes. So what this story really is about is how the CIA is funding a geoengineering study, how they have determined that climate change is a national security concern and the military is already acting on that but they are trying desperately to get commercial aviation in on the fun you can read all about that here um the cia weather warfare and climate terrorism scientists claim chemtrails are accidental geoengineering um and you know all of the other references down here are about things they're going to do to chemtrails so dig in it's a great story it'll get you started and there will be more details to come guys and unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot nothing's going to get better it's not